FC. We're the first professional sports club in America to have true, well soccer at least, to have true supporter ownership modeled off of the Packers and the response has been incredible. Over $600,000, maybe $650,000 now raised. As we're underway, so any hashtag will get us started it right back. McKenzie. Just passing the ball around the back for now. Dunson's gonna go long. The ball sits up a little bit on the turf, but Detroit City's gonna clean it up nicely. Very acrobatic clearance there. <laughs> well, sometimes on this artificial turf, you see a ball that would normally skip a little bit more on grass end up setting up a little bit, especially if it's been relatively dry conditions. It seems to what happened there. It's still pretty risky to go for something that we might have a we might have a head injury on the field. That looks to be number nine, Sean Lawson. He is okay. With any head injury, you want to make sure that there's ample precaution taken. Of course. And as a player myself, I know he probably does not want to go off the field right now, but he needs to make sure he's able to return to play safely. Seems that the trainer looked at him and he's all right. Now, Baker Goodman down the left side, out the spur. Oh my. Ball just over the bar. CFC's defense was a little lackadaisical there. They looked a bit, a bit too relaxed coming out of the gates. Maybe not completely woken up yet. I'm sure that will get them going, though. If, if that doesn't get them going, I don't know what will. Right. Very, very close chance there. There's barely over the bar. Last year's meeting at Finley Stadium saw CFC dominate the lion's share of play. Uh, but struggle to finish as the ball goes out of play on Phil D'Amico's goal kick. And, and Detroit City took advantage of that in the second half with uh, taking advantage on a mistake and then off of a counterattack as Detroit City won that game 2-1. to one. CFC had to come from behind to take a 1-1 draw uh, away at Keyword Stadium the following week. As Marias clears the ball. For Chattanooga, I believe that they will definitely want to get a win, especially in their home stadium. And against yeah. a team they haven't been able to win against yet. Obviously, the goal of every game is to, is to win. Uh, but there are still several players that need to be evaluated for the long term as Montel McKenzie picks it up and sends it in towards Felipe Oliveira. Oliveira can't control. And it's saved. Ooh. Pretty nasty tackle. Oliveira going for the ball, but a little bit late there. And the Detroit players are not happy with him at all. Which I can't really blame them there. They're trying to keep their own players safe, and the team's more of a family as it is. And to see someone like that take a tackle of that quality and that late. I could understand their frustration. And a surprise the ref if the ref doesn't have any further action, I which looks a like card a card, out. yeah. We're gonna see what this is here. And it's a yellow card for Felipe Oliveira. A very, very early yellow card. I think that's a fair call though. With the challenge as late as it was. I wonder if that's one of those challenges that in, in an actual regular season game might be given a red for. With this being a friendly, it very well could have been. But I feel the refs get, taking control of the match early here and trying to make sure that nothing gets out of hand by the end of the match. Steinwash is going to take the free kick now. Smarzok heads it. Max can't get on the end of it. To 
Kamika is just going to have to play this out. Rather choppy play so far, these first five minutes. With Detroit City having a little bit more of the ball, definitely looking more dangerous to start. Chattanooga is struggling to keep possession through these first opening minutes as well, which is odd to see really with them playing a more equally matched opponent as opposed to last night or last time out against yeah I, I think we're gonna see I think we're gonna see as the as the half goes along players fall into the rhythm of the game get a little bit more used to uh, to the other players around them uh, build a little bit of chemistry this is only the second game and these guys have only practiced now about four four or five times in total and that's if they were with us two weeks ago for communicaciones down the left hand side now. CFC appears to be putting a little bit of token pressure on, uh, holding a high line, but mostly, mostly sitting back, clogging up the midfield. It's forced Detroit to go over the top a couple times, and there's another example. Sorny hashtag with the header. Cost are trying to control. Soren just gives it away. It seems to me like CFC is very content with letting Detroit play around in the back and making them go for a more risky and dangerous ball over the top versus being able to play through the mid and gather up a more stable attack. D'Amico's got this one just fine even though the assistance flag went up. Tosses it out to Montel McKenzie. McKenzie comes to CFC from Tennessee Wesley University via Cincinnati Christian University. They transferred after the fall semester and will be playing for CFC legend Luke Winner at Tennessee Wesley in this fall. As Dunson's got it now, he's going to switch field to Marias and down to Yahashchak. Good one two there with Juan Hernandez. And Soren's ball can't find Max Wilshire eye, but Felipe Oliveira's got it and Costa takes a shot and Steinwasher saves. It's a good play, especially out of the back with Soren and Juan. Oh. First, first real opportunity for CFC going forward. And forces a save out of Steinwasher. I'm going to be interested to see how Soren plays as an outside back. I haven't seen much of him in that position. I can't recall Soren playing outside back since 2016. And, and, I don't, and I don't believe it happened very often. But it shows that a lot of these players have a lot of positional flexibility. Which as a team, that's something you, you desire a lot of. And you can see that with our forwards especially, they constantly rotate in and out of sides or position. And now to see our defensive players being able to do the same thing is a very good thing in my opinion. Obviously you want your first choice team to be the strongest possible, but things always seem to happen and you've got to be prepared for when they do. Because you has to launches it forward into nobody in particular. And Lawson's header goes out of play after kind of jumping on Miyagi. That was an interesting no call from the ref. Most of the time, those will get called for the players. Max botting somebody up. up. And again, no call. Well, just Red. kidding. The referee got word from his assistant. And a foul committed against Max Wilshire. I will put the ball in play for Juan Hernandez on a free kick from... About 35 yards, maybe 45 yards out. The way the team's stacking up here, it looks like one's going to try to swing this one in toward the box. Looks like five CFC players in the box with Jao Costa going to sit on the near side. Hernandez sends it in now. And nobody home. Be out for a CFC throw in. And this is a nice feature for CFC. When Jordan Dunson's in the game, he's got a great long throw. And sometimes these situations can turn into de facto corner kicks. He attempted several of these 
two weeks ago in the second half against Comunicaciones. Uh, nothing came of, of any of them, although it did produce one dangerous chance. Great throw, keeper stays home. And Steinwasher is able to collect with relative ease. Quick long ball out towards, towards Lawson. Marias is going to head back to Phil D'Amico. Well done by Ruben Marias there. And you were mentioning Jordan Dunstan's long throw. That is a good weapon to have in your arsenal as a team. Being able to take longer throws from an uh, area near the corner instead of having an actual corner kick for the author. Detroit City puts on a press and Phil D'Amico just has to boot it out of play for a throw in. The ref says it took a deflection for a CFC throw in. And Sora has the ball taken away. Might have been looking for a foul call there, though none was given. Balls out with Stephen Carroll. And his pass goes towards nobody except for the keeper. Alex, we've played 11 minutes. What do you see so far? I see a very shaky CFC. They haven't really kept possession and made their passes count this first half. They've had a couple of decent opportunities, nothing really to write home about. But I do see their play picking up a bit toward the end of the half. And from Detroit, they're playing very solidly out of the gate. And I feel like that's a bit of a struggle or something that CFC is going to struggle against starting out the way they did. But the way Detroit's starting, I would say once a goal scored, I believe it will be a very open match. It looks like eight of these 11 Detroit City players have already been announced as signed for the 2019 season. Uh, and I believe their first practices were Tuesday of this week as Soren Yehashik plays the ball in behind towards Wilshire. He can't get there. And the referee's going to call a foul on Wilshire. Crowd very unhappy with that call. I, I think they would have liked to have seen a corner kick instead. But the referee is not willing to oblige. It did look like a rather soft foul from here, but the assistant ref does have the best viewpoint on the field, especially in that situation, so I would believe his fault. Steinwasher goes along. Marias with the header. And Hernandez down to Smarzak. Smarzak, a native of Germany. We've solved our internet issue. They shouldn't have problem. Montel McKenzie. Looks around, tries to get a ball through, can't, uh, but does deflect it to Hernandez back to Hernandez. This crosses the new one, although Jao Costa is running in now. He takes it away. Costa still gets by a defender. Cross in, no one's home. Smarzak can't control. Detroit City goes long towards Ruben Marias, who holds off Sean Lawson. And is able to give it to Dunstan. And see if he's going to regroup, except Dunstan plays it out of play for a Detroit City throw in. Now that, now that our internet seems to be fully functional again, uh, as a reminder, uh, EPB is the best internet, best cable in town, and they are a proud sponsor of Chattanooga FC. They send somebody out as well. We, we appreciate them sending out somebody to help take care of some technical difficulties. That's the kind of service you only get from EPB. Appears to be a foul on Chenega FC. Detroit City will take a, take a free kick from about 50 yards out. Or maybe from 40 yards out. Although the referee decided to uh, frown upon that. Bad idea. While we have a moment, Volkswagen Chattanooga, the official title sponsor of Chattanooga Football Club. Volkswagen Chattanooga, proud sponsors of CFC and the Chattahooligans since 2009. Free kick served in. McKenzie's there to head it away immediately. Costa controls out to Juan Hernandez, who loses it. 
out to Felipe Oliveira now. He's gonna hold it up a little bit. And Samarzak's able to get it to Juhas Jack. Now Marias. Out to Montel McKenzie on the left hand side. And he plays a lazy ball towards Smarzak, who's able to help recover. A little bit worrying from the, the young Englishman. I do quite like McKenzie's play style, though. He, he plays a very true outside back. He has got a little often. bit of sauce as Hernandez plays the ball in forward. Max with the header out to Felipe Oliveira. Oliveira's going to take him on. No, he's going to lay it off to Juan Hernandez. He plays it across to Jao Costa. Costa. Tries to slip it in. Juhaszczak keeps it in play. And it's out for a corner kick. I'll try to do a corner now. And with the build up there, their possession and their play through the midfield is looking much better in my opinion. I, it's almost as if they heard me say something about it. We were discussing the opening minutes and improved on it substantially since then. Sometimes the curse of the commentator is the blessing of the commentators. McKenzie sends it in. And Steinwasher collects. That's a good idea to flick it on toward the middle. It was a hard angle to hit a ball on target from where he headed the ball. And there was a lot of blue shirts around the keeper. Good ball out from Steinwasher. It's taken away all there now. Towards Vilshry, but it's a little bit behind him. You can see Chattanooga FC start to close in when the ball is turned over, trying to win the ball back. The ball's played in. The free kick goes to Chattanooga FC. Taking very quickly. <coughs> and. The Chattanooga FC is still keeping that possession very well. And it looks like that's something they're trying to focus on more now instead of trying to go directly to goal each time. Hernandez. Looking around, looking for something. Smozak back to Hernandez. Runs into traffic but somehow keeps the ball. He's going to play it in towards Max Wilshire. Over to Felipe Oliveira. And Oliveira can't quite maintain, except Smart Zach's got it now. Out to Wilshire Eye. Wilshire Eye is there for the bar. Let's go kick. Good, Good little shot. play from CFC there, making a little something out of almost nothing. Yeah. Helped by the trickery of Juan Hernandez in the center of the park. Yeah, his, his foot skills to get away from two players was honestly unbelievable for me. And that's something that has really been a strong point in the CFC midfield is just his ability on the ball. He can find the passes, he can get around people, and he can get out of tricky situations, which as a midfielder is some of the best qualities to have. Hernandez has been known for plays like that ever since he joined CFC in 2015, right before the playoffs. He's become almost a club legend since with his play style and his amount of time playing with and in the team. McKenzie on the overlap. Takes on a man. Go across and it's a little too close to Steinwasher. Good idea though. Like we were mentioning earlier, McKenzie playing that true outside back, getting up and making crosses which I personally really enjoy watching an outside back play like that. So it's, they have that attack mindedness to not only defend when the ball is played backwards, but also get up and attack as well. Miyachi with the deflection there. I need to apologize to Miyachi for a second as I have been on occasion referring to him as Smarzok. Miyachi who played 90 minutes for CFC against Spinacasi is on trial. Signed, uh, the signing was announced on Friday. And he cut his hair, which has made him slightly more difficult to identify. So I apologize to Mr. Bianchi. This cost to take some throwing. Bianchi now. Looks around, doesn't see anything, goes back to Ruben Marias. 
Miyoshi is playing a different position that he played last time out as well, playing more of a CDM role instead of a center back. Oliveira out on the left hand side, looking to run it on somebody, crosses him up, and the ball goes a little bit too high for Max Vilshirai. CFC has really grown into the game the last few minutes. They're looking like a much better side than how they opened. And for the CFC fans, that's a very good sign. And hopefully, they'll continue this improvement throughout the rest of the match. If you've heard me coughing a few times in the background, I do apologize. The pollen count here in Chattanooga has been rather high as Hernandez plays it in. Vilsharai, Slimewasher spilled up, is able to recover. It's another beautiful play by Hernandez, though. Just Slime slipping in the ball to the very difficult and small openings and finding the players he needs to find and could have very easily led to a goal. Steinworcher's up to a couple of saves off of shots and a couple more off of crosses now. Dunson with a header. Biachi forward towards Oliveira. It's Jimmy Fiscus with the header for Detroit City. It's going to go all the way back towards Phil D'Amico. You mentioned Steinwasher's name a couple of times already, and since in the last match they played at home here in Finley Stadium between the two clubs, Steinwasher came up very big and made a very, very numerous amount of saves. Also helped out by his posts, but that was part of the reason they actually managed to win that match. Steinwasher is a very capable keeper, and there's no surprise what Detroit would want to bring him back as Lawson's able to take advantage and plays the ball in, and D'Amico is going to get there. <laughs> Amadou Cisse was running in behind. Samarzak can't get it to Oliveira. Tackle by Genki Miyachi is going to be judged to be a foul. Mentioned Amadou Cisse. I believe he is a new player for Detroit. A relatively recent signing. Yeah, and he wasn't on the team last year, and he's been playing well so far, I believe. Detroit City is now with a new head coach. This is his first game in charge. It's Trevor James. Uh, ben Pierman's the, the former coach for Detroit City. Took a job with Memphis 901 FC after serving, I believe, five years at Detroit City. Coach James has appeared to, to bring back several of the fan favorites and stalwarts for Detroit City, but obviously, as with any new coach, some new blood is in. Smart sock with the sliding tackle. Bolivar's got it now. McKenzie with some trickery. McKenzie with some more trickery. And Hernandez can't quite get there. Detroit City is going to look to counter pretty quickly here. And they do. They get it out to the left-hand side. But the, whether it was a cross or a shot, it goes a good 20 feet over the bar. You were talking about with the whole new coach idea. And there is a lot of new players on their roster this year that haven't played last year. And I don't believe we'll see the true extent of what those changes have brought to the club tonight. And it could be very beneficial or very hurtful throughout the rest of the season. We'll have to just see and find out come the end of the season when we play them in the Founders Cup. Marias now. Detroit City has dropped a little bit deeper as CFC has had more possession. Vilshirai to Soren, out to Oliveira, but he's judged to be offside. Soren pushing further up the field as well in that outside back roll. I mentioned, I mentioned blip positional flexibility because Soren Yuhashchik used to play a little bit of CDM in college at University of West Florida under coach Bill Elliott. Some of you may have heard of before. <laughs> it does have a very familiar ring to it. Edwardson now. He's going to play long, but 
no one made the run and it's out for CFC throwing to be taken by Montel McKenzie. And Soren plays that very defensively minded outside back, which is very well contrasted by Smart McKenzie. Smart out to Oliveira now. Little tries making a run. That's a great, that's a great sliding tackle to prevent a, a ball across. Could have been a, could have been a likely goal there, if not for that tackle. Just very good defending there. And CFC once again looking dangerous, especially on the break, as Joao Costa goes over to take the corner kick. And on breakaways, we have Oliveira and Yao Costa being both outside wingers that are extremely quick. Steinwasher again collecting the corner kick. And not for the first time tonight. I doubt for the last either. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I suspect you're right there. Listen to the energy in the stadium. People are still coming in. It's filled out rather nicely as well. Costa and Oliveira have switched sides now, with Costa going over to the left-hand side for that corner kick. Once it, Mel McKenzie with a steal. A good ball in behind for Jao Costa now. Rough point advantage, Costa goes by a man. He's gonna cut it back and serve. The referee waves off any potential foul, much to the chagrin of the fans at Finley Stadium. I, I wager that the referee thinks that Costa went down a little bit easily as Hernandez uh, appears to have played the ball with more of his arm than his shoulder. Yeah, I'm surprised that wasn't a yellow there because it did look pretty intentional. I'm just assuming here. it's a friendly. Yeah, the ref doesn't want to give out too many cards. Like you were talking about the potential penalty call. This early in the match, the refs aren't probably going to give that as easily as they would later on. And I wonder, I wonder if the ref would have given that that potential foul if it was another two yards to uh, to make it outside the box. I personally believe so. Penalty calls do bring up a whole new idea in the ref's head with whether it should be or shouldn't be a foul. Edwardson, Kinsey can't quite get there, and Cisse into the side netting. Very good chance. I was worrying a little bit. <laughs> Seems he needs to tighten up defensively a little bit, and not, not, not forget to to make sure they mark their man. Yes, yeah, he said he got a fairly open chance there, and yeah, the ball appeared to just graze Montel McKenzie's head, but did not do enough to change the physics. You take it out of the reach of Amadou Cisse. He can do with a lot of power as well. Jamaica goes long. Yes, he's going to try to keep possession here. As Detroit City puts the press on. Marais plays out through the middle. Out the sword, he has check. Sees a run. From Max Vilshry, that flag stays down. Vilshry's looking. He's going to take it on. And the shot leaves a little bit to be desired. There was a, a bit of an underlapping run by Felipe Oliveira towards the middle. But Vilshry decided to have a go. Just hooked it. Drags it wide. It's a good ball from Gaschek, though. Very great ball, ball, great yeah. run. Unlucky on the finish. Steinwasher will take the goal kick. And the referee's going to call a throw in. The last few minutes, Chattanooga has looked the more dangerous side to me. This is this has tended to happen over the years, and CFC's got to be able to take advantage of it. As Mariah steps in, I can't control. That's a ball in behind. Dunstan shepherds off Sean Lawson, and Tamiko collects and immediately throws it out towards Montel McKenzie. Costa now. 
Costa running. Tries to slip it into Juan Hernandez, but can't. Lawson's offside there. Can't participate as Dunstall sent it over to Marias. Smarzak to Hernandez, but he plays it right to a Detroit City player. And we'll have a little bit of possession for Le Rouge. It seems like Detroit has almost lost their focus on possession that they had in the first minutes of the match. Trying to go more direct. It, it seems that CFC has gotten a little bit sharper. Uh, they clogged the midfield a little bit in the start. Now they're starting to press a little bit more. Uh, trying to cover the in, in behind and over the top ball. Marias is able to intercept, but it's out for a... It's offside call. Ah. It'll be a CFC ball. And it looks like Marias is going to take this now. As CFC has gotten chances, it's going to be important to put one in the back of the net at some point. This, uh, although not to the degree of, of the game last year. Uh, but CFC definitely needs that ruthless finish. Miyachi out to Marias. As they get more shots on target, I believe that finish could come. But they really haven't had a lot of shots on target. This Marias match. is going forward now. And Miyachi's going to have to clean it up and possibly put it in behind towards Oliver, uh, towards Max Wilshrive. But Steinwash is there first. Steinwash is going to roll it out towards Chrysler. Back to Steinwasher now. And he's being told just to play along. And he does towards the right hand side. Kenzie loses the header, but Jordan Dunstan's able to easily collect. Miyachi now in midfield. Taking a little bit larger role. He's going to go forward here. And the referee does not, does not blow his whistle for a foul. It did look like a very clear foul from our angle. It looked to be clipped, but the ref may have saw it differently. And it looks like the coaching staff for CFC have made sure the fourth official knows their standpoint on it. City's going to have a throw in. City fans in full voice. Another throw in now. And they're going to switch the play to keep a little bit of possession. Mr. Hernandez puts on the press inside his own half. And that's a shot attempt, but Phil D'Amico's got an easy save. A bit ambitious shooting from that far out. Maybe it was a step off of his line, but quickly recovered. A comfortable save. Yeah, Jack getting forward again. Plays it into Vilsharai. Over to Smarzot. 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 Steinwasher saves it. Spilled it at first, but is able to recover for the second save. And now City's going to try to break pretty quickly. Hernandez is able to poke it out of play. It's a very good shot. Smarzot with a great run there. Had an option to go out wide, uh, but went ahead and took the shot himself. And it was hard enough that Slimewasher couldn't gather it on the first try. McKenzie intercepts, but he just plays it out of play. I believe Chattanooga will need to capitalize on Slimewasher's deflections. And maybe that will be what brings them goals. Because he has deflected a couple of the balls that were shot at him out 
to into the box, and you had to collect them on a second try. So if CSC can capitalize on that, I believe they could get some goals from it. Uh, the Blues really need to really do need to take advantage of the shot attempts they've had. The scoreboard still shows zero to zero as we head towards the final seconds of the 35th minute. Dunst with the header, but it's directly to Willie Spur. Smarzog takes it away and wins the throw in. And he's gonna like to have Montel McKenzie take the throw in. Hernandez. Hernandez still has possession. And wins a foul. Or wins a free kick, I should rather say. Oliveira takes it real quick, switches field to Jao Costa. Costa in space is dangerous. And he plays a great ball out to Oliveira. Oliveira now looking, looking, and can't quite get the shot away. And now, Detroit City have nearly some numbers as the ball plays over the top. D'Amico is going to be able to clear it up. Oh, that's what's worrying. Lawson now on the right kind of the right hand side. And he's gonna play a ball towards nobody in particular. In the last few minutes we've seen a very good counterattack opportunity and a mistake by a CFC defense, both of which were what led to the goals that Detroit won by when they met here last time in Finley Stadium. So he's gonna keep some possession now. Edwardson, out to Stephen Carroll. He's going to give it back to Edwardson. Towards Spakey Goodman. And Carroll now plays it in behind. Uh, and the ref is going to keep the flag down. There's a cross into the box, and wow. What a goal saving tackle from Soren Yahaschek. CFC defense was napping a little bit, except for Mr. Yahaschek. Hernandez has it out wide. But that shows his center back roots coming all the way from the outside to take care of a ball at the near post, or at the far post rather. Soren's speed is useful in recovering. Cos is just going to go by there on the right hand side. He's just so fast even with the ball. Cuts back, takes a touch, but Detroit City defender read it. Sends it straight out for a CFC throw in. And we're not going to see the long throw of, Hernan, or, uh, of Jordan Dunstan here. I think that's more of a option to make sure that the counter attack does not happen as yeah. easily. With a couple of counters, they're near counters in a row. It's not a not a uh, surprise. Ball is also on the right hand side as opposed to the left. Hernandez cannot slip it through towards Montel McKenzie, but Miyachi now wins it back and plays a one-two with Hernandez. CFC just trying to keep a little bit more possession here. Smarzok to Yehaschek, back to Smarzok. Not a ton of movement up front for CFC. Ball needing to go side to side. Montel McKenzie plays to Oliveira. Turns his man. Oliveira now coming down the end, end line. Gonna cross the ball in, and it's over the head of Bill Shirai, but right to Jao Costa. And Costa's shot comes in, Vilsharai redirects, and it's over the bar for a Detroit City goal kick. That's one of those chances you want back if you're Max Vilsharai. Yeah, he had Signwasher on the ground with Joe Costa's shot, and just a little bit lower in that redirection would have went into the net, found the top corner, and yeah. If you're Wilshire, I you definitely want one of those again. Steinwasher's goal kick. It's collected by CFC. All the bills pinging around a little bit in there. McKenzie goes long, but it's over the head of Wilshire. And Chrysler just heads it back to Steinwasher. Well, we have a quick moment. 
the Market City Center's China FC's official player housing partner. Luxury living at the center of it all. 728 Market Street, in the heart of downtown. Market City Center, proud sponsor of Chattanooga Football Club. Dunson heads it down, but it's over the head of Miyachi. And Lawson's in behind. Montel McKenzie can't quite get there, but he might have slowed it up enough. Marias with a good tackle on Sean Lawson. Ball goes out of play for a throw in. Again, it's a Detroit City counterattack, and that's got to be worrying. And Sean Lawson looks very dangerous. He is, from last season, their top scorer. And it's pretty clear to see why. He's extremely quick, and he makes those runs in behind the back a lot, winning a foul there. Yeah, the referee's going to get it. Looks like Kenki Miyachi. Uh, Marcus Smarzak, excuse me. This is a quite a dangerous free kick. With our considering the uh, considering the last free kick from the opposite side of the field proved to be quite dangerous into the side netting. Yeah. See if the CFC defense is a little bit more resolute. The aerial chances that Detroit's gotten, CFC has not defended well. And set pieces seem to be something that Detroit's pretty dangerous on. So we'll see how this one turns out. Ball's hit in pretty hard. D'Amico's going to punch. Not taking chances with that one. And Detroit City's going to keep possession. It's a good punch by D'Amico. Good decision there. Stonewasher goes, goes long. Hernandez covering for McKenzie. A little over three minutes to go in the first half now, plus maybe a little bit of stoppage time. Ball in over the top, Dunstan heads it, and D'Amico collects. I would say there's probably two to three minutes of stoppage time for the injury and the yellow card issued earlier in the half. Marias now. Kiki Miyachi comes, splits the defenders. And D'Amico's gonna go long towards Montel McKenzie. Good ball. McKenzie struggled a little bit to collect there. But his pressure helps Marzok win the ball. Hernandez is going to go long towards Felipe Oliveira. With a... Another no call by the ref. Oliveira's a little upset at a, another no call. That one more I understand though. It did look a bit softer than the last. But it looks like one of those one of those things that might get called if it wasn't inside the box. I feel like a lot of penalty calls will be like that, especially in this kind of match. Uh, with the CFC players in the crowd who are less than thrilled with some of the calls on the field so far. As Coach Elliott makes his case to the fourth official. Back to D'Amico. Maybe one last push here before halftime. There is plenty of time for a goal. Dunstan goes long. Smarzok's gonna collect. Sends it out towards Joe Acosta. Oliveira now, pulling off. He's gonna play it towards Hernandez. In towards Max Vilshirai. Back towards Vilshirai, but the defender reads the play. Smarzak kind of tosses it in. And Vilshra is called for a push. With the majority of the calls seeming to go Detroit's way in this opening half, I can understand why the Chattanooga players are upset. And with them having two potential penalties not given as well, I would say their frustration with the rest is only going to increase throughout the rest of the match. This certainly doesn't feel like a friendly. 
say in the minds of everyone except for whoever deemed it a friendly in the first place, it's not a friendly. There's a lot of reputation and pride on the line in this match. Not to mention roster spots for players on both of these teams. Oliveira is able to collect. We're heading towards the 45th minute now, still no score. Lawson's quite clearly offside. You mentioned it about it not feeling like a friendly. It doesn't have that friendly atmosphere that the game two weeks ago has. And it would go as far to say as any meeting between these two clubs is not really a friendly with this the is, rivalry. This is a rivalry match, match yeah. and possibly CFC's biggest rival. Uh, especially if you consider the, the camaraderie among the, the fans, among the front offices of both clubs. Uh, if you consider the, the home and home series in April of last year, and the two clubs working with others to spearhead the NPSL Founders Cup. There will be one minute of a time. One minute at a time is called. Maybe 30 seconds left now. Nope, just kidding. <laughs> that is the first half with the score Chattanooga FC 0, Detroit City FC 0. What are your thoughts on the first half, Alex? I like the way that Chattanooga came alive toward the end of the half. They seem to perk up and wake up and play their roles as they should have been throughout the first part. And we're back for the second half of play between Detroit City FC and Chattanooga FC. We will get you some substitutions uh, as we see them. I see Gabriel Torres, number seven for Chattanooga FC, uh, subbed in at left back. And I believe that's the only thing that we've changed so far. We have four very special guests with us in the broadcast booth tonight. Cindy Sparrow, the NPSL Managing Director and Commissioner. Mr. Kenneth Farrell, the chairman of the board and also the owner of New Orleans Jesters. We have Stephen Wagner, the NPSL treasurer, and he's also with Virginia Beach City FC. And Nathan Walter, an NPSL board member from Jacksonville Armada FC. Welcome, everybody. Thank hey, you. thanks for having us. So what does this game between these two teams mean? Hey, obviously, it's just a friendly. Uh, but the four of you are here. Yeah, we're here to support the game. They're, like these are two flagship teams that have been growing the NPSL over the last ten years, and as we know, the like tremendous teams in the landscape of soccer in the U.S. We wanted to support it, especially with the NPSL moving in the direction that we're moving in. These are leaders. We want to be here, support the game, and let everybody know that you know the NPSL is moving up. So you mentioned the NPSL moving up and with some new ventures. Uh, talk about a little bit about the new ventures that's coming up for the NPSL. Yep, so we're launching the Founders Cup following the NPSL regular season. These two teams are two of the teams that will be in it and it's just exciting to be moving in that direction, offering our members another level of play, uh, another standard of play and to give the players the opportunity as well. And, and the future looks so bright with the other teams in the league that these can lead the way for us to step forward and, uh, and show which, you know, the direction that we're going in. So it's very important to be here for that fact. Now, the NP how many teams are in the NPSL? Uh, competing this summer. 91 teams. 91 teams. And we've got 11 set for the Founders Cup right. in the fall. Correct. Yeah. And then I uh, presumably, hopefully a few more to join the Founders Cup teams with the uh, the new professional uh, venture starting in 2020. Yeah, definitely. You know, I think it's one of those things that keeps evolving, right? Uh, we keep getting more and more interest from other teams. And I think it'll be uh, very exciting for the NPSL moving forward. Well, that's fantastic. We can't wait uh, to, well, one, get to the summer season, the regular season, and then to the Founders Cup. And when you when you look at where we, you know, where we, obviously when Chattanooga came into this league and what it was then to what it is now, it's now is the time to move it forward and look at new levels and, you know, and we become, you know, not only Chattanooga, but the NPSL itself in tandem have become such a big staple in U.S. soccer that uh, I just feel that it's the right time to be here and celebrate this game, especially with these two teams involved. And to have Virginia Beach represented and have Jacksonville represented and see what's going on, including New Orleans, my own, my own hometown, my own team, it's just a very exciting time to be here. 
That was a Detroit City free kick that was calmly collected by Torhe Weidenroth, who was another substitution at halftime, uh, moving in for Phil D'Amico. And Hernandez wins the ball back. So, uh, a little bit as an aside, have you guys taken any sightseeing when you've been here so far? <laughs> That's funny, this is actually my first time here. <laughs> first time in Chattanooga. Yeah, so I got the first class treatment with, uh, with Tim. Tim was able to take us around and show us the city, so it's been excellent. That's, that's wonderful news, and I, uh, you guys should know that you're welcome for the pre-game or the post-game festivities at Chattanooga Brewing Company tonight. I will keep a seat for you. Across, uh, so, across, <laughs> across the no, listen, listen, I'm here with New Orleans every year, so I understand the atmosphere and what goes on in this town with this team plays. It's phenomenal to be here, and it was nice just to come and relax without having to play a game just like, <laughs> and just enjoy it. I know there's a love fest between me and the Chattanooga <laughs> We, uh, but, it, but it's a lot of fun. It's so much fun. You can feel it already. You can feel the oh, fun yeah. in the atmosphere. And, and by the way, the people are just tremendous. They're, they're just so friendly, so open. We've had a great time. We've had some MPSL meetings here, strategizing for the future. And we've had a very productive weekend. To finish off with a top class game like this is incredible. City takes a free kick quickly. Uh, the referee says that Ruben Marias did not handle the ball. As Ru Ruben Marias has gone forward now, looking for Oliveira. Flag stays down. Oliveira now. The left hand side is going to cut in, take a shot, and it's carried away by Nate Steinwasher out for a CFC corner kick. Well, is there is there anything else you guys want to add while you're up here? No. Oh God. No. Uh, yeah. Obviously, Nathan from Jacksonville, and um, you know we're used to experiences like this in the past with the NASL and so on and so on, and, and uh, it's great to come and see such a flagship uh, team within the MPSL. And, the progressions that they're going through, speak with the ownership group, understand you know, what, what they've done to get to this point. And uh, we're excited, we're excited to see what, what can happen and see where this team progresses. As you, can, as you can, sorry for interrupting, as you can see the uh, ball was actually out for a Detroit City goal kick. We are, we are also, well, obviously excited for, for what's to come, both for Chattanooga FC, but also for our other partners in the MPSL. Uh, it's, really about, it's really about the possibilities. I mean, we're, 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 we're really, um, you know, pioneers at this at this level and, and, and navigating new waters and, and moving forward with our teams and with our league. So look, again, as I said it before, very exciting. And to come see these two teams play, we was just so happy that this game has taken off. And uh, this has become a rivalry as well. It was a long time coming. I know it happened last year. It's happening again. I, uh, and, uh, I remember the I remember the calls between both supporters of both teams, uh, hoping for hoping for a game between the two for several years before it actually happened. As Hernandez nutmegs a man, and the ball's out for a throw in. Well, we uh, we really appreciate you guys being here. Uh, four representatives from the NPSL, and. Uh, it's been a pleasure meeting you guys. Well, look, thanks for your hospitality and thanks to Chattanooga. It's been a tremendous two days for us. Meetings, meeting with the club, organizing the league, looking to the future, focused on the future, which is really our motto. And uh, it's just great. It's a great synergy, it's a great partnership, and uh, thank you again for having us. Thank you for having us. Thank you. We appreciate you guys being here. Smarzog with the goal! All right. Yay! Yeah. 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 Jordan Dunstan with a throw in that was headed away but right to Marcus Smarzok, who takes his chance and gives his first goal for Chattanooga FC into the top corner. What a strike by the German. That was an incredible, incredible hit. As you can see, uh, the re there's a replay on the big screen. Just a sweet, sweet hit. By the way, that goal brought to you by JD Frost and Company, revolutionizing the accounting industry and proud to sponsor our VIPs and the first CFC goal of each match. JD Frost and Company. And what a way for our first goal for Chattanooga FC. Finally getting on the board. They've had a lot of chances so far. Able to Able to finally make it happen. Oh man, I'm really excited there. And Soren Yehestrek is being subbed off now for number 14, Joe Wayne Laidley. Yeah. This is Laidley's second appearance for Chattanooga FC. He played as a trialist 
in the Nashville SC game in March of 2018. Let's see what Detroit City does now to um, see if they can claw their, claw their way back in this as Ruben Rice is going to kick it out for a, for a throw in. Alex, what did you think of the goal? Uh, beautiful. Um, from the reaction of the crowd, is the, you can tell how much it means to everyone here. But the saying goes in soccer, you're most vulnerable when you score. So these next few minutes will show, will be a bit harsh test to CFC to see if they can keep that 1-0 lead. Hernandez with the steal tries to get it forward to Max Vilsherai. And Vilsherai, uh, the ball was cut out by a Detroit City defender. And the ensuing quick throw-in is collected by City. Miyachi with the, the good defense bringing up play. Miyachi now to Gabriel Torres. Announced as a signee this week, along with yours truly. Although if I, uh, for accuracy's sake, must say that the signing of, of me on well, was announced on Monday of April 1st and I, I think that might be bad news for my uh, for my playing career. I, I saw that. I was, I was very intrigued by that. You know, I didn't actually know it was going to happen. Really? I had no idea. <laughs> my phone started to blow it up and Gabriel Torres tries to slip it in and it goes out towards Costa and Oliveira can't quite connect. Oliveira kind of pokes it away, but just towards the city player. Uh, city have made at least one change so far. Uh, I just noticed number 44. That's Tony Lowe. Uh, and it looks like... That's a very interesting call. It looks like a foul has been called. Uh, Detroit City will take a free kick from just outside the box. You mentioned those calls earlier with the same sort of calls and fouls being no calls while in the box. And, and this one's C slightly outside. CFC is going to make a substitution now. That's number 20, Dominique Marvin. He's replacing number 15, Max Vilsherai. Marvin's and Vilshry are, are trialists, and Vilshry put in a, a hard-working shift up, up top. He played well, and and of course substitutions. We got to we were hoping to see some players. Free kick in the box, deflected away, sent back across, and it's going to be headed away by Gabriel Torres in the end. That ball is going out for a throw in. It's interesting that they have him as a outside back. His last season in college he played as a midfielder and now he's reverting to his original role as a defensive player. Yeah, he played left back for the Villages SC in Florida last year, uh, contributing to uh, obviously the defense but also contributing to the attack and we're looking for him to go forward a little bit as Detroit City takes a corner kick here. Let's head it out. And uh, the lines are mostly cleared, although Detroit City's right back at it now. Ball's heading towards the corner. Marias in, in defense. Ball's out for a corner kick. And you were mentioning Torres having to or potentially pushing further up. He did take the spot of McKin Montel McKenzie, yeah. who had pushed up several times in the half as that ball is headed away by Jordan Dunstan. So I say they're trying to replicate that same play style on this. Yeah, it, it, it looks like it. Those are two similar players. As the ball is in towards number two, that's Sab, Sab Harris, who is subbed in. Uh, but the, the header is right to Torhe Weidenroth, the CFC keeper. Hernandez now. He slips it in. Costa. He cut his cut back, but it's just nicked away. And it'll be a CFC 
corner kick. Man, if, if Costa could have could have pulled that cutback off, he had acres of space. Yeah. It's good defending though by the city player to get back and just get the ball out of play. Saving because if Costa did find that space, I believe that could have easily resulted in another goal. They would have been two down instead of just one. Another substitution for Chattanooga Football Club. The man with his first goal for the club, Marcus Smarzak, is being taken off for number 12 and the hometown kid, Caleb Cole. Costa with the corner kick now. Slow ball, easily, easily taken care of. See if he's got a little bit of the press on still. Trying to keep the city in their, in their defensive half. So Sarazak has a um, probably a pretty good feeling on the bench right now, having the sole goal in this match so far. And a first for CSC. Well, it's always better to be leading than trailing. And I think that goal, not only did it mean a lot to the fans and to the players, but I think just for the, the psyche, you could maybe see the, the players be a little bit frustrated uh, with so many, with a few missed opportunities. And yeah, Oliveira is going to win a throw in here. If this score line does hold to the latter minutes of the match, you could see the desperation sink into Detroit. Because they do not want to travel this far and lose a match here that they know they've won, or at a place they've known they've won at before. I, I wouldn't be surprised if City pushes up later in the match and uh, CFC sits back in defensively and then tries to counter. There's a lot of speed up front still with Oliveira, Marvins, and Jao Costa. It seems like the speed up front will be a real center point of the attack going forward throughout the rest of the season as well. It, the, it, the speed kind of forms with the play style of CFC with the counterattacks and the quick wingers getting crosses into the box. Yeah, I have to agree with you there. And I would, I would point out that it's not like uh, the left back Gabriel Torres and the current right back Joanne Laidley. It's not like they're slow either. Uh, Joanne Laidley's quite quick. Uh, typically a typically a winger, uh, a winger and forward uh, playing right back tonight, uh, filling in for Soren Hashtag. Soren took a pretty hard knock on one of the challenges before he got subbed out. Uh, Marais gives it away, but Dunson's there to clean it up. And Marvin's with an impressive touch, and Oliveira gives it back to him in an equally impressive way. Marvin's holding it up. Oliveira with the back heel. Gabriel Torres gives it to Caleb Cole, who plays it in behind towards Felipe Oliveira. And the referee has, uh, the linesman has judged that to be offside. It seems to me like Oliveira is playing with a lot more um, freedom and confidence in the attacking third now. He's playing quite direct, it must be said. George Tomikov is in the game. As I recall, he was starting. Yeah, I believe so. But this is a friendly, and I'm sure that the club's worked out uh, worked out rules and uh, procedures for substitutions. Obviously both teams are uh, evaluating players and getting guys minutes and any, any substitution patterns are generally agreed upon in advance. City's going to keep possession here. And though it may not seem like it, you do have to keep in mind this is still a friendly and there are a lot of players that haven't played together still. And they need to figure out, both teams, which players they're going to keep in their squad for the upcoming seasons. Miyachi took the ball away and City headed it out for a, what will be a Gabriel Torres throw in. He's going to take a few steps. towards Marvins, flicks it on to it's 
interesting no call from the AR on this near side. Because from our or from my angle, it looked like Torres did a foul throw actually, which is odd to see at this level. It and looks like they've gotten Marvin's there for a foul of some kind, maybe a handball. Or it throw. was just a throw in, and no one really knows what's going on. Ball's out of play on the far side. Be a CFC throw in. We got that car. <laughs> <laughs> Caleb Goldmore. Joanne Ledley is overlapping. Cole cuts in. Slips it. Tries to slip it in behind, but can't. Ruben Marias makes a play for the ball, and City kicks it out of play for a throw in. A little bit choppy right now these last few minutes. Some new players. Game's lost a little bit of rhythm. I think that's more the new subs getting into the rhythm of the game itself, whereas the players during the first half were used to it, and the new subs have to adapt to the challenges that are on the field. And also, there's a bit of nerves always when coming onto a match like this. Marias out to Laidley now. Goes to, towards the middle, towards Miachi. Miachi again. Costa with the flick towards Marvins, but it's collected by City, who try to play long. And Ruben Marias is there to the challenge. Miachi plays it across to Gabriel Torres. Looks for space on the left hand side and finds none. And Torres seemed to run out of room there. He kicks it off a City player for a throw in. Another substitution now for Chattanooga FC. Juan Hernandez is coming off the field, the club captain. And number 88, Daniel Valenciano, is coming on the field. Do you think that's a defensive-minded substitution? Yeah, I would have to say. Uh, as the ball goes forward, Steinwatch is just going to play it out of play. I uh, I imagine that uh, Caleb Cole will take Juan Hernandez's place as the number 10, uh, and Valenciano and Miyashi will play in the pivot together. It looks like Miyashi's going to stay as the, as it looks like the number 6, and Valenciano will play more of a box-to-box -box role. Caleb Cole tries to play a ball in behind towards Costa. Well, it's like a, good a little role. too close towards the towards Nate Steinwasher. I feel like it's a good role for Yashi in the CDM style. He's role. done well tonight so far, yeah. in my opinion. He's broken up some plays. Uh, he's, he's made passes forward. Cole with the deflection. Costin Valenciano now. City playing through it but end up going long. It's cut out by the chest of Gabriel Torres. Finds Cole in the middle of the park, down to Miyachi and back to Cole. And Cole, Cole keeps looking around, finds Miyachi. With Valenciano as a box-to-box -box player, I think that's a good decision by CFC as well, because he's no stranger to scoring goals. Yeah, Valenciano had four or five goals for CFC in 2018, playing more as a defensive player that would go forward late. Valenciano now on the ball, looking, finds Marias who came in to join the attack. Costa now. He's going to spray it out towards Caleb Cole, who's in some space. Cole cuts back on his right foot, sends him across, and it's just over the head of Dominic Marvins and Felipe Oliveira. He mentions Marias' name quite a bit tonight as well. I feel like he's had a very strong game. Marias tends to be playing as a from what I can tell is a ball winner. Uh, he's, he's reading the game, he's stepping out in front of the attacker, uh, take the ball away. Obviously he's got some size, although we don't know how much of that is actually just his hair. <laughs> um, Marias, in his, in his 45 minutes against Minacasiones, became a fan favorite uh, and, a, and a new starting member of the CFC All-Hair team. Cole's going to cut one out of play. With 
our signings and the showings from our current defenders, I don't think we're going to have to worry too much about defensive struggling throughout this season. I would, I would hope not, but as we say that, Valenciano gives the ball away from Rice is able to cut it out. Bit of a nervy moment there for CFC, but they're able to play their way out of it. Miyachi back to Laidley. That was a bit of a commentator's curse. <laughs> Caleb Cole. He's going to play all the way across towards Gabriel Torres. He's going to take some space on the left-hand side. Valenciano now back to Cole. Again, not a ton of movement happening. Mostly standing around. Valenciano goes back down to Gabby Torres. He's going to take some space on the on the underlap. Miyachi out to Laidley. Plays it in towards Oliveira, who can't control. Laidley now playing defense. And the call is going to be a throw in for CFC. Laidley shielded his man off. And the referee declared that to be legal. Valenciano sprays it out towards Gabriel Torres. And back to Valenciano. CFC moving the ball around a little bit. And that ball is just a little bit over the head of Felipe Oliveira. And now a quick message for all those supporters groups watching the game from across the country from PrideRazor.org. PrideRazor is a joint project of our very own Chatta Hooligans and the Northern Guard and supporters of Detroit, which enables supporters groups in more than 30 cities to make a difference in their communities by doing outreach and raising funds for local LGBTQ organizations. PrideRazor, support your local club, support your local cause. Learn more and sign up your supporters group at PrideRazor.org. CFC out for a throw in. Good people for good causes. And he plays the ball in behind for Dominic Marvins. Marvins looking, he's got a man. And the cross is, uh, appears to be more of a shot that goes out of play. There's been a couple of those for CFC tonight. Some shot crosses. Briefly, and I apologize for my, uh, my lack of a sponsor reading. Chai Memorial, visit memorial.org. Chattanooga Memorial Hospital, imagine better health. The official healthcare partner of Chattanooga FC. Miyachi hit the deck there, but the referee keeps the whistle down. And Torres with a run, able to give it to Marvins, who gets to Caleb Cole. He's looking for Jao Costa, but that ball is just over the top. And Costa is not quite able to get to it. Steinwasher tried to play it pretty fast. Uh, but now City's back in their formation. Torres did well showing his pace there, pushing up the near touch line. He's had a, he's had a couple of good runs already this half since subbing on. Uh, we'd like to see how the outside backs fit into the, the roles in the team later on in the season to see if they play, keep with the attacking style or play more of a defensive role. City ball in behind, but it's too straight to Torre Widenroth. Valenciano now, out towards Laidley. Plays it straight into Costa. He's gonna spray it out towards Felipe Oliveira. Oliveira now. Tries to, tries to cut back to the outside, but it's calmly taken away. Just trying to do a bit too much dribbling through these players there. And he's going to stay down for a moment. It's a little bit worrying for CFC fans. And to take this opportunity, the Center for Sports Medicine is the official trainers and orthopedic providers for Chattanooga FC. The Center for Sports Medicine. As always, we appreciate thank our sponsors. And it appears that's going to be the last action for Felipe Oliveira. He's coming out of the game. He's going to be replaced by number two, Cameron Woodfin. Also leaving the game is number eight, Joe Costa. And making his very first appearance for Chattanooga FC is the Tennessee Wesleyan striker, Harry Bagley. CFC with the press on by Cole. I wonder if 
bit his injury was a true injury, or maybe just a bit of gamesmanship shown, since there is. Take a couple seconds off the clock, make the yeah. subs happen. Less, or not a lot of time remaining. Even if it's the slightest of knocks. Uh, better to be safer than sorry. So City Ball sprays out to the right hand side. But that ball is out of play and it'll be a CFC throw in. About 14 minutes plus stoppage time left in this game. China FC with the 1-0 lead on a early second half goal by Marcus Marzok. City with possession again. Trying to make a tackle. City's going to retain possession. CFC's pressing high still. Yeah, they're trying to force the ball over the top, it seems. And Backley just sends it out of play there. Uh, yeah, they want the ball over the top. They, they're they pretty comfortable with, with Dunstan and Marias at center backs. Uh, to win headers. And then for CFC to keep possession. And I, I'm glad they're doing that and not just sitting back and defending their one goal lead. It's almost... They don't have the same poise in their attack as they did before they scored, but it does seem like they still want to get another goal. Yeah, more on the counter-attack, it would appear. Also, I did an injustice to uh, CHI Memorial, uh, and I apologize for that. It's CHI Memorial. City content to just play it around the back right now and CFC content to let them. It does seem like they don't want to go for that over the top ball that CFC is defending so well so far. Miyachi takes it away, gives it to Cole, keeps possession, that ball's going to go back to Torre. Marvin's with the acrobatic pulled up play. Ruben Marias is going to join the attack now after the good play in midfield. Torres down towards Harry Bagley. Bagley looks to take him on, but he's going to find the support of Torres. Torres now with a cross. That looked dangerous, had some good pace on it. But no one on the back post for CFC, and it's out for a city throw in. CFC has been using their width very well this half, I believe. That's an announced attendance you just heard of, 4,129. Good, good crowd on hand. And if you're watching from the live stream and are in the Chattanooga area, try to come down for our next match, which is April 27th. CFC will be playing AFC Mobile. And it looks like Jalen Chrysler is coming back on. Blue Cross Blue Shield of Tennessee, based right here in Chattanooga, they are here for us in our communities. Blue Cross Blue Shield of Tennessee. City's going to take a throw in now. Woodfin plays the ball into Mar 1 2 with Marvins. Woodfin chips it back, but no one is home center and City is going to look to counter a little bit here. The ball is sprayed out wide but number 25 Nick Lewin, a substitute, cannot control. You mentioned earlier about the rotating subs being allowed in this friendly and I I think that was to the asking of Detroit. They only have five or so substitutes on their bench, which compared to Chattanooga is quite slim. Yeah, so, I, I did just notice that now. That, that makes sense. And it seems like for, a, for an early season friendly where you're evaluating players, that seems like a reasonable thing to accommodate. Right, you do want to get players that you are evaluating in as much as possible and still have a competitive game as well. 
which I believe they've done a very good job of. Okay, Valenciano's a little upset at the foul call there. Thinks he was kicked out at. The referee disagrees. Both the Chattahoo Hooligans and Northern Guard still in good voice. That'll be a city throw in. It's going to come in long. Dunstan with the header away. And that shot was a weak one. It's sent out for a uh, clearing of the lines. But Cam Whitman's pressure forces a city a header out of play for a CFC throw in. Laidley and Miyachi combining. Laidley is, is fouled. Two supporter sections being very lively. It's almost as if they feed off of each other's energy. They do. Uh, having been down there for uh, for a couple of games in the mix, they uh, they, they certainly do feed off on one another. And you can you can feel the energy in the building. Ten minutes to go in this game starts to it's picking up a little bit. Torres played it into Valenciano and CFC just keeping possession. City's starting to really put the press on. Valenciano being dragged back a little bit. And Bagley's gonna be judged to be offside. Referee tried to play an advantage there, it looks like. The, the crowd definitely thought they should have got the foul for it. I think it looked like Valenciano was was, was expecting the foul to be called uh, as as did most of the other players. Referee let play go. Now with about under 10 minutes remaining in regular time, I believe that the desperation for Detroit is going to kick in. They don't want to score this yeah. equalizer. And Caleb Cole is going to put pressure on, on the city keeper. And Dunson's not going to take chances with that ball into the box. He's just going to play it out for us. Detroit City corner kick. Detroit seemed to be sending everyone up for this corner as well. Down 1-0. That is not a terribly surprising decision, although uh, I am sure they will be slightly mindful of a, uh, of a Chattanooga FC counterattack. It's not like it's not like the substitutes don't have any speed, although maybe not to the degree of uh, Costa and Oliveira. Ball bounces in a little bit, and that's Caleb Cole, I believe, with the the save. And it's Miyachi's header, and Bagley's going to give chase, and he's going to continue to give his chase. Uh, Steinwasher has to play it long towards Dominic Marvins, who wins the header to Daniel Valenciano. Marvins, Miyachi, Miyachi to Cole. Cole clips it into Cam Woodfin and heads it down to Harry Bagley. He's going to play it out wide to Joanne Laidley. Good little bit of play there for CFC to keep possession. Tease Detroit City a little bit in the attack. Woodfin plays it to Miyachi and Miyachi sends it over towards Valenciano, now to Caleb Cole on the left-hand side. A teasing ball from Daniel Valenciano. Cole's trying to split two defenders, but is unable to do so. But a sliding challenge to win it back. And Gabriel Torres' cross is headed away. Although not completely out of the danger zone. Torres to Woodfin. And see if has got to be careful here on the counterattack. But Marias is there to help slow it down. And that's Sean Lawson 
with a, a rather astute play to go over in an opportune moment. He was definitely looking for the foul there. And City's going to take the free kick pretty quick, but it's over the head of George Tromikoff, out for a CFC throw in. Lead to Miyashi. Miyashi down the line towards Marvins. He tries to turn. Keeps possession. Slips it in behind, but the flag is going to go up for Harry Bagley. That was tight, and that could have been 2 0 if the flag stayed down. Yeah. It looks to me, though, like. Is that Dominic Marvins down on the far yes. side? Seems to be alright, being helped to his feet. Interesting the refs calls though throughout this match in my opinion. It's some fouls that have been stronger haven't been called and some weaker have. And I don't think the players nor the fans are too happy with that. City's so gonna spray a ball out wide. A long cross in towards the box, but Trey Widenroth catches, holds, and stays inside the box. and is going to send it out to Gabriel Torres. Well, five and a half minutes here left in the second half, plus whatever stoppage time is added by the fourth official, the referee. It doesn't feel like there would be very much stoppage time. On I can't this imagine. There have been a lot of substitutions, just one goal. Uh, but no, no real long injury layoffs as Valenciano gets the ball out to Torres. I'd say probably three minutes or so. Seems to be standard. Valenciano now looking. Tries to play it in behind towards Marvins, who can't quite get there, but he's going to keep the pressure on. And Marias clears the ball immediately. And Harry Bagley now is going to give chase. And Lawson holds off Gabriel Torres. Very nice dummy run from. 44. And that's Miyachi right there, taking the ball away towards Laidley. He gets it back from K.O. Cole. A little heavy touch. Laidley cannot quite finish. That heavy touch off the ball from Cole uh, hurt him greatly. Took the ball a little too far away. Good effort from the outside back, though. Getting in a scoring area and creating a scoring opportunity. CFC's got a, uh, a substitute that's waiting to come in. And it looks like they're taking off Dominic Marvin's the second half substitute. Possibly possibly a bit of a uh, an injury issue. And number 13 being subbed into the game, that's Bruno. City goes over the top. But Laidley's there. Uh, so is Marias. Can't quite clear the ball, although Caleb Cole slides in and wins it back for the Blues. Woodfin turning. Woodfin still running now. Tries to slide it across, but the ball was not where Bruno thought it was going. I feel like the substitution for Chattanooga have done a very good job of getting themselves stuck into the match. And making their presence known on the field to the other team and the coaches. I have to agree with that there. Woodfin still pressing a little bit. We just are eclipsing now 87 minutes on the dot. So about three minutes to go plus stoppage time. City keeps looking for an equalizer. Torres takes that away. Valenciano with control in the middle of the field. Sends it over to Bruno on the left hand side. Bruno's just gonna he's gonna try to make a run, but he runs the ball out of play. Some of the rust that we've been we've been talking about. Players will be able to shake that off as the as as more training and as the season wears, the regular season wears closer. It's a good idea though, and he did well to hold off the defender trying to take the ball away from him. He just couldn't keep the ball in play. You can tell that. He may be, he may be uh, lacking a bit of height compared to some of the other players, but he's definitely got some strength to him. Did really well to hold off play. And his 
defense there is going to help win a throw in for CFC. And you mentioned the high, some of the best players in the world, like Lionel Messi, are the shorter players. So that can be a very useful tool for you. Gabriel Torres does a great job holding off the city defender, who wins a free kick. That'll allow CFC to take a few more seconds off the clock as they start really getting into match management mode. Valenciano is going to go up the line towards Gabriel Torres. Still possession. And Marias gives the ball away a little bit worryingly. And that ball is going to be a little bit too far. The city attacker might have been offside, but Torhe Weidenroth collects it calmly. He's just going to go long towards Cam Woodfin, who misjudges the ball. Cole. Cole going past people. Cole looking to cross it in. And he can't get it past the first defender, but bad clearance, and Cole's on the ball again now. And he's going to take it to the corner, waste some more time here. What an inventive ball towards the. Oh, inventive three ball towards Cam Woodfin, and City player reads it and sends it out for a CFC throw in. I feel like Chattanooga would want to see this match through, but also would really like a second goal to secure the win. I would personally enjoy a second goal to get my heart rate down a little bit, as there are about 15 seconds left in normal time. Widenroth's just going to go long here. A little bit too far for Laidley. And Marias sends it out of play. Now we are into stoppage time. Two minutes of extra time. Marias is going forward still. Marias has to spray it out towards Bruno, but it's just a little bit too long. He had a ball possibly for Harry Bagley on the throw or on the through ball, but tried to go out for Bruno to take some time. Good read by Miyachi. And Valenciano earns a much needed free kick. I'd be surprised if they take their time with this free kick. I can't imagine there's any rush at this point. Only two minutes for only two minutes for stoppage time, so. Dunstan. He's just gonna go for the corner now. Caleb Cole's going to try to shepherd this thing out of play for a throw in, and he does. Laidley, Miyachi. Miyachi back out to Laidley. Some step overs, some fancy, some fancy footwork. Laidley gets by by. He's going to cross the ball in towards Bruno. Bruno over the bar. That would have been the exclamation point on tonight, my friends. That was a very decent effort, and not too far off. Those side volleys are hard to hit and hard to keep low, and he struck it with enough power. You would have had the keeper beat if he kept it on target. Stonewatch is going to go long here. And it's controlled by Laidley, but Cam Woodfin can't get a read on it. Valenciana slides in and is able to help keep possession, and that's the final whistle. Chattanooga FC wins their 100th game in their long history. And they also earned their first win over Detroit City FC. Those ties are now 1-1-1. One, one, and, one. Uh, and there will be two more meetings between Chattanooga and Detroit later this fall in the NPSL Founders Cup. Those games are at Detroit on August the 17th and in Chattanooga on October the 5th. Alex, a 1-0 win for Chattanooga FC. What'd you like? Maybe what'd you want to see more of? Uh, and by the way, just listen to that crowd. Yeah, the, the fans are loving the win. And you mentioned the 1-1-1 one, one, one record now between the clubs. Furthermore, cementing that rivalry that these clubs have. Um, I think it was a good showing from Chattanooga. They have 
clearly played well defensively enough to keep a shutout and scored a goal to win the match. I I think they need to work on getting their chemistry better because and that will come throughout the remainder of the season. This is very, very early days. And once they get that down pat, they get their players, they get their formation, they get their chemistry. I think we're looking at a very strong CFC for this season. CFC played rather well defensively, as they mostly did against Comunicaciones. It seems to be a, a strength for the team this season. Uh, the Columbia's man of the match was the goal scorer, goal winner, or game winner, Marcus Marzak. I don't think Denai is going to be a night he forgets anytime soon. I, I certainly would not. As the City players and the CFC players make their way over to the respective supporters groups. That's, I think, the best part about this kind of match is the supporter sections, respectively, have been vocal all night and have made for the, an atmosphere that's, that makes you want to be in the crowd. Yeah. Makes you want to be in the stadium. There is no better place to be on a Saturday night in Chattanooga than a CFC game. There's just simply nothing better. And and once again, the atmosphere was top notch. Obviously, dueling supporters groups uh, makes things even better. And a good performance from the from the team. A lot of new faces, a lot of trialists. As we we bring the team back in three weeks for the AFC Mobile game. We'll start to get regular games going on, and I think we'll see a lot of chemistry heading into the NPSL regular season. Well, folks, from all of us here at the... I didn't leave a jacket here, did I? Oh, oh okay. For all of us here in the, in the uh, press box, I'm Matt Coniglio, friend Alex on the call, Eldo Conductor and everyone else. Thank you all so much. We'll see you next time for Chattanooga FC.